again, it's Cindy Eiler, and I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to make a video, but I couldn't figure out about really what I wanted to talk about. I thought about doing some videos on the chakras, but you know, if I'm going to make videos, I want to enjoy them too. Not that the chakras aren't interesting, but I just feel like I'm just teaching a class, and I don't want to do that. So one thing that came to me that I really want to talk about is DNA. What is DNA? Really, what is DNA? And how it affects us and where it comes from and who we are and how can we change it and all that kind of stuff. Because I think people hear the, the word or the initials DNA and they're like, oh, okay, that's some like scientific thing. I want to talk about DNA in a way that will help you with your life and understanding who you are. So DNA is who you are. DNA is what you're made up of. So when you become a human, you will be made up of DNA of your parents. So your parents' DNA is made up of their parents' DNA and their ancestors' DNA, and it's just like a chain reaction. It, it's continuous. It's from your past. So the thing about DNA is it's not just about, you know, okay, your, your, you are your parents' DNA merged. Yes, definitely, but I'm talking you are your whole family line. So whenever your family line came into existence and all of the generations back, that is all in your DNA. Everything that happened to any of those people, any trauma, any belief programs, any, um, you know, experiences. So obviously if they're difficult experiences, they're really going to affect your DNA. And we'll go into that. Also, it doesn't only include people in their DNA, but it also includes your, um, the countries that you stem from, the places your family line lived, um, the what happened, traumas and chaos and belief systems of the countries that you um, your family line stems from, and their cultures, and um, I mean it, it's crazy when you think about it. So I mean, imagine back in the days when everybody that was Irish married Irish people, so they have their Irish DNA. But imagine, you know, especially with um, the U.S., more and more a melting pot of all different ethnicities. I mean, I am Filipino, Spanish, English, Irish, Scottish, Dutch, and German. So imagine the DNA I've got to deal with <laughs> because that is like a mouthful. And so not only am I dealing with the family line, but I'm dealing with all of those um, nationalities, all those ethnicities, I'm de dealing with all those countries, all those country beliefs and traumas, and all of those genetic that I'm attached to with the countries and my family line, and, um, you know, so from the potato famine to the um, Nazis to the Japanese war in the Philippines to the whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh my gosh, I've got a lot going on in my melting pot of DNA. So just put some thought to yours. So this doesn't even apply to past lives, okay, <laughs> or future lives or present lives. Like I believe we're living parallel lives all at the same time. I call it past life just for a name to uh, relate it to so people know what I'm talking to about. But I believe that we're just living all kinds of parallel lives all at the same time. Anyway, so let's just try to 
get our hands around this DNA thing. So I was, you know, talking about today um, to some people about um, the second chakra, which is the energy center that's um, below your navel and the color is orange and it has to do with sexuality, creativity, manifesting, desires, and desires. So not only sexual desires, but desires that you want in your life, very much that has to do with manifesting. And when you tap into that second chakra, what could be some common emotions? And, and also, that's a very emotional chakra. It has a lot to do with your emotions and dualities and more morality. So it has a lot going on in there. So just on the surface of second chakra, think about sexuality. How many people grew up thinking that sex, you know, that's a bad thing, you don't do that. And you certainly don't do it before marriage, like you heard your parents say that. And, oh, don't show your body because then you're a hooker or hide yourself or, um, you know, you know, sex is a dirty thing, you know, just, I'm not saying that that was what I grew up with, that's not true, but, um, I mean, some of it, but, you know, these are common things that people around us have grown up with. And then bring religion into it. I mean, think about, okay, this was an example that I gave when we were talking about it. So, in the U.S., people think that we're pretty liberal and pretty open, but obviously sexually we're not as open as like Europe where they go topless at the beach and stuff. So that's one thing, but imagine, okay, this is just like a really good example talking about DNA. Okay, so say that you are Middle Eastern of some type, and so you might have family stems of being Muslim. But you grew up, you were born in the States, your parents for a few generations were born in the States, and you, um, you know, say you're Christian, or say you don't practice at all, but you don't really have, relate to the Middle East at all, you've never been there, you don't really know anything about it, it's just not really part of your experience. So you've never been there, you never think about it, you've never been those religions, you don't know anything about those religions, you don't know the lifestyle of women there, Say you've never heard anything about it, you never saw the news, you don't know anything about it, but you're just like, say you're like me, and I'm just here living my life, doing my thing, and I don't know anything about it. It doesn't mean that if your family's from there, that those beliefs, those cultures, those, um, the chaos, the whatever, whatever that has to do with a woman in a Middle Eastern country, um, if just because you've never seen it, felt it, known it, experienced it, doesn't mean that you're not experiencing it in your DNA. You absolutely have it in your DNA. I mean, women are stoned there for different reasons. Um, some countries, they're, you know, mutilating the women's sexual parts so they can't experience pleasure. I mean, that was still going on until fairly recently in some countries. Um, a lot of women are asked to cover themselves up um, for whatever reason. I'm not judging it at all because actually I lived in Egypt, so um, I see both sides of the story. So it's not, I don't think it's as bad as the way that the U.S. tries to pump it up and make Muslim look bad or that women are just held in this horribly restricted place because I know women from there and I, I understand, maybe I don't understand totally all their beliefs, but I did read about it and really I was among these people and the women in Egypt are not su suppressed, okay? So I mean that's what I'll say, I don't know about all the other Middle Eastern com countries, I would not go anywhere other than Egypt probably, but um, anyway that's a whole different subject, but what I'm saying is the things that they've had to endure, their culture, the way that men look upon them, which, I mean, sometimes there is a difference. And, and But you know what? In the U.S., sometimes men treat women like crap, too. So it's not just there. It's anywhere. So I'm just using that as, a, as an example, as like a kind of an extreme. But just say you've never had any 
any interaction with it you don't know anything about it but you have your blood is from there that is your dna that's your culture that's the countries that you come from like i've never been to germany i've never been to the philippines i've never been to um ireland i've never been to england i've never been to a lot of things that i am so you know that that right there you know doesn't mean that it doesn't affect me just like um and so i've, I've been working on my dna dna healing because a lot of stuff from ireland was coming up for me for a long time and germany and so um, i know that i've got to work on some of those dna beliefs and the trauma and the guilt and just all kinds of things that and i've never even been there so that's the same thing just because you have not been in those countries have had no experience with your background the traditions the cultures the religions the beliefs of where your family what they thought you probably don't know even a quarter of it if you start even taking it on this level like going to thinking about a country that your family's from and then you start doing research like what has happened in that country that was devastating um, that was really significant and then you find like these things that happened and then you start studying and then you go okay what kind of beliefs do these people have what kind of backgrounds do they have what kind of fears do they have what kind of um, happinesses do they have what kind of jobs did they have because jobs could be every and anything say that you your life right now say your bank account is either feast or famine either you got a bunch of money coming in or you're like all of a sudden you have no money it could be that you have farmer dna in you what is farmer dna what would that be that farmer mentality it's that feast or famine it's like i better save while i have it because the next crop who knows what the weather's going to be like who knows if i'll have a successful year and they're always living in fear like will it be okay and i better hold on to what i have now and you know the more you try to hold on i'll show you a card the more you try to hold on to something that you're afraid is going to leave the less likely you will hold on to it so if you notice like say you like you're you have money but say you're running out of money all of a sudden you're going oh my gosh i don't have that much money what am i going to do oh you know i've got to have food you know the the mortgage is coming up whatever and you start going okay okay i have you know fifteen hundred dollars and you know i need like sixteen hundred dollars so i can't spend money and then all of a sudden you start getting all these unexpected bills coming in or you need to buy food or something breaks like all of a sudden you've got to spend money right at the time when you say i cannot spend money that always happens do you notice that so you try to try to hold on to what you have in fear that you won't have enough and what happens is your bank account just starts totally emptying i'm looking for a card a tr in my deck that totally describes what i'm talking about of course it'll probably be the very last card in the whole deck after i've been going through the whole thing come on where are you so the more you try to hold on to anything like i even say like the analogy i give of course it's like the last the fourth before the end card in this whole deck um you try to hold on like i say you know imagine you're cupping like water in your hand or sand and you're you keep it you know you're like holding it very easy like you're no stress you're just holding it but the minute you start thinking oh my gosh this is my last water if i don't hold on to this i won't have any so you go to grab it and the minute you close your hand the water has gone so think about anything in your life whether it's holding on to a man or a woman or a thing the minute you try to hold on to anything in fear of losing it you are going to lose it immediately so think about that with your money so look at this card see those uh it's the pentacle 
and it's known as the money card and this guy is holding on to dear life his money one under each foot he's holding on to the one in the middle and he's even balancing one on his head so when he's holding on so tight so desperate to hold on to what he has he he's actually clenched and in fear and holding on to um, it's so tight that he's not leaving any energy open to flowing to him. So not only is he not open to receiving more because he's totally in fear and clenching off his energy. Because remember, when you want to receive anything, your energy has to be open and flowing. So if you go into worry or fear, you automatically close your energy. If you need money or something to come in your life, you better stop worrying and having fear. Embrace it and breathe. I did a video on that. It's called Fear. Um, are you stressed and worry? How to let go of stress and worry? Um, look at that video because it talks about this subject. You've got to breathe and open up your energy and give thanks to Creator, God, Divine, whoever is your higher power for whatever you're looking for. So in this case, say this guy is worried about losing his money. He needs to just let the money go. Whatever money you have in the bank, it's money you have in the bank. Stop concentrating on it because if you only have fifteen hundred and you're you're thinking, I only have fifteen hundred, I only have fifteen hundred, and you're keeping the focus on the fifteen hundred, you're not letting more come in. So the angels always say, Okay, whatever money you have, it's a done deal. You already have that. Stop looking at that. Focus on the new money coming in. Focus on bringing more in. So breathing and say, Thank you, God. Thank you, universe, for five hundred more dollars. Thank you, universe, for a thousand more dollars. Thank you, universe, for the flow of money. Thank you, thank you, thank you, universe. I I know I have enough money, but the minute you start freaking out and clenching and trying to save on and think about what you have, you're you're closing off your flow. So that's that. But I was talking about farmer mentality and how they worry and you know feast or famine so if you have a bank account that does that that goes up and has a lot and then goes down and you freak out there's something that you have um an issue with that's causing that that wave of up and down instead of the constant flow so anyway getting back to this point of dna like that's that farmer mentality so what were the jobs that your family had i mean you can think of it of the ones you know maybe you know enough for one or two generations but you may not know the rest so it, say that you were german or say that you were middle eastern or whatever go back in history and look do some research and see what kind of issues that they had whether they were wars whether they were um you know disasters with natural disasters what kind of beliefs what kind of jobs um people commonly had um and and think about you know okay they commonly had these sorts of jobs so if they had these kind of jobs, what kind of beliefs come with those jobs? Um, so, um, you know, how about that belief? I was thinking about a banker. What would a banker have? And I think a common belief of them would be you got to have money to make money. Oh, forget that. I mean, that's a horrible belief. You got to have money to make money. So what if you don't have money, then you're not going to make money. If you have that belief, you need to let that one go. How about, um, you know, the ones that our parents told us, money doesn't grow on trees. You know what? I look, there's no trees on our property here, but I was living in a place where we had a beautiful maple tree, and every day I went out and looked for money on that tree. I believe that money grows on trees. I, I believe money can be found anywhere. Um, let's see. Um um, just think of, you know, just think of the different beliefs that you, that you heard growing up. You've got to work hard for money. Oh, I let that one go a long time ago. You know what? If my, my work is not fun or, um, yeah, if it's not fun or exciting, I don't want to do it. If work is hard and burdening, I'm going the wrong way. I made a pact with myself a long time ago. That if my fun isn't my my fun isn't fun if my work is not fun i'm not doing it i mean that's just something i decided and so you know think of the different things that you know you've heard all your life and believed 
look back at the from the countries that you're from and look at you know what kind of jobs they have and and start putting some thought to some beliefs that might be in your dna um you know what maybe your family line at some point had a history of um of um incest but maybe somehow it cleared up and it never reached your generations or your current generations or maybe it was a secret and you never heard about it but you never were exposed to it that's totally going to affect your sexual energy your relationship energy your um your shame your guilt your burden I mean, that second chakra stuff I was talking about, like what comes along with the sexuality and, and the beliefs that people instill in you, like sex is needs to be hidden, it's, you know, you can't flaunt it. I mean, who? I don't want to see people having sex in front of me, but whatever. Um, everybody has their different thing, but it's certainly not dirty, and it's certain be certainly beautiful, but some people look at sex as just having sex, like fucking, okay? Like, it's all about the fuck, and... You know, I mean, you might be in different moods to have it different ways, but ultimately for me, it's about having like this connection, this soul connection where you really become as one and experience each other as one and you not move into so much the bodily function of it, but the spirit union part of it that's so beautiful. But if people can't get past their, oh, I'm ugly, or what is he seeing, or God, he doesn't know how to do it right, or, you know, if you can't even get to that point of that spirit connection, of that forget about the body thing and just feel it on a spirit level, like that's so amazing, um, then that's something, you know, there's probably some inhibitions that you have to work through. So... I just wanted to give you some thought about DNA and that's why you know I don't know if all of you know but I founded light activation healing system and we work with DNA and our healings are amazing because what happens is that we not only um, find things that you know about that you have issue with but we find stuff that you may not have any idea that you're holding in your energy you know, from past life or family line, genetics, countries, we find stuff that could be blocking you up and you have no idea it's even there. And those are the things that are biting you in the butt. Those are the things that are getting in the way and you can't figure out why you're not manifesting love or money or jobs or happiness. That, you know, when we can get in and get into deep levels, we're able to move stuff out and open people's lives up in amazing ways. And we can also move out stuff in all directions of time and space and also upgrade your DNA to suit it to you better for what you want to create in your life. So we do some amazing healings. If you ever want to know about light activation, um, I always have my website on the um, description below, the website and the email link. So um, we can always tell you about that, but you can also do a search for um, light activation healing system or on my YouTube, there's stuff on there. But, and we also have a page on uh, Facebook, light activation healing system, but we will be changing the name soon. And I don't know what it is yet because I want to move away from healing because that, um, using the word healing because that indicates something's wrong and I don't believe anything's wrong I just believe we need to remember our divinity so I'm shifting that energy of that name but for now light activation healing system is our trademarked name that's us and uh, we do amazing 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 work um, Anyway, I will put a link to an interview with our light activation stuff right below, but there's a lot of other interviews, but I'm just going to put a short one that they did at an expo like a year or two ago. DNA healing is where it's at, people. Think about it. Do some diving into it. That's a really delicious and rich subject, and I could go on and on about it, but I wanted to point it out to you. I wanted to talk about your second chakra and how that could just simply be affecting your manifestations. Just that 
suppression, guilt, shame, energy, hiding, um, dirtiness, whatever it is. I mean, how does your family, your family line, your cultures, your the countries you come come from, how do they look at sexuality? Just think about that because second chakra is about manifesting too. And if you don't move those issues out of the way, it'll get in the way of your manifesting. I don't know about you, but I like creating my life. And I'll be danged if somebody else's limiting beliefs and old DNA patterns are going to stop me up because they sure as heck ain't. No way, no way. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got to say. So um, enjoy looking into your DNA. That's all I got to say.